What's up, guys? We are hanging out, and it is super, super yellow. But we're going to be going on stage in a little bit. I'm going to be live streaming it here. We'll see if this actually works. But enjoy the show, guys. We are announcing Venture Media today and what Venture Media is all about and how we're doing it differently here at Stas Fun. And so this will be a, a fun recording. I got the 360 camera behind me there. So we'll see if that works. Hopefully this won't conk out. Live, guys. We're doing it live. For us, as founders of the project, Pedro existed four years ago. Yeah. Um, we, my, one of my my co-founder got hacked for forty-four thousand Ethereum after his ICO. Mm -hmm. um, so we just started challenging this other ones. Let's see. Which we'll see who shows up. Hanging out. Yeah. 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 Send this on Discord to everybody out there. Can you see me? Yeah. That's the question. I hope you guys can see me. Let's go, let's go. So I got a, a financial services firm, so I'm trying to, uh, to basically get into the crypto space and start exploring those different options for my competition. I'm trying to grow and start accepting it, you know, making it a part of it. So, yeah, it's going to be like knowing the taxation. You'll support it. You know, okay. all that. Well, that's it. Well, that's yeah, probably to the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. Then they show it to me. Does it show it visually? Yeah. Because, like, on the, like, on the, because, I mean, it's a screen and everything. Like, yeah, well, or, we could uh, technically, but, I mean, yeah, that would be oh, that's cool. Like, you have this on your phone, right? Yeah. 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 It will always be updated. Oh, oh, yeah, because it's all over, right? Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, I want to I want to get into the one that's reinvested. Okay, okay. We'll be talking a little bit about it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I wouldn't update my data. Thanks, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We live. It's good to see you guys here on the stream. We're talking about venture media, which is what all these guys should be doing, is live streaming all of their ideas, live streaming all of their their checks, all of the investments that they make. Who knows? Who knows what they're doing? That's what that's what we're trying to change. Thank you, Crypto Scout. Creative Matt, it's good to see you, brother, in the stream. Let's go. Thank you, sir. Click it on, and that's your clicker, green and red. Green, green and red. Um, maybe I should take this opportunity to get some film footage so we can go back upstairs. Or... You don't have to come with me. Yeah. You're like, see, man, you've got the power. So you're you like why you get higher and higher? higher. Yeah. Perfect. So then we can move all of them, take it back home. Yeah. 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 What's your first name? Uh, well, what about that finish doing business? Yeah. A lot of business. Yeah. A lot of business, yeah. lot of business yeah. in the front. What's going on here? Sorry. Yeah. All yeah. Sorry. All yeah. All business. Yeah. I'll sit down over here. I think we got, we're like Inception right now. I think you've got a stream going on inside our stream right now. I got it, brother. So guys, this is Peter Saddington. He's our next uh, speaker. He's going to teach us how to create a gravitational brand. Now, Peter, I, I just got to say, is one of my favorite people that I've met, probably maybe my favorite. He's got an incredible, incredible mining facility, which he took uh, my audience around on a live stream, unprompted on like a... On some kind of scooter. Yeah, it's yeah, basically like a drone footage kind of thing going on. He's a uh, master racer. His, his son is a badass nine year old who's going to be an F1. Nine, right? Yeah, we're, we're, that's why we got my lots of Bitcoin. Yeah, my, my favorite uh, pastime is watching his kid race go karts all around the world. So, <laughs> Peter, guys, uh, one of my favorites. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this, and I give the floor to you, sir. Thank you, Scott. Really appreciate it. Guys, welcome to this stage. I'm really excited to talk about something that has been brewing in my life for the last seven years. And so 
we're going to be talking about this new type of venture funding model, something that I created a, a thesis around in 2017. I, the first blog post that I wrote about venture media was in 2019. And so if you're a big fan of manifesting your destiny, if you're a big fan of manifesting your future, speaking amazing and epic ideas to the universe, sometimes, just sometimes, it actually works out. So my name is Peter Saddington. There is my tweeters, at Agile Peter. I would love for you to take a shot of me right now, and you can tweet at me, and then I can tweet back at you. Because it actually matters, and you're going to see today why tweeting at me, you'll get exposure in the next 24 hours of about 675,000 impressions. Maybe that matters. You probably should go to bit.ly bit.ly slash venture book. This is the third book that I've written. It's all about how you can create a gravitational brand, increase deal flow, and increase revenue through content generation in this new world that we live in. Let's jump right in. A little bit about me, I'm a multi-founder and venture capitalist. I've had one exit in 2014 and two early equity buyouts over the last seven years, so it's been a lot of fun. I created my first family and friends venture fund in 2016 at two and a half million, crushed it. With all of those GPUs, I melted the paint off the walls, learning how to mine Bitcoin and at scale. My second fund, that middle picture there, we raised $10 million in 30 days. We deployed it in 60 days, and in two years, we made about $50 million back during the recession of Bitcoin mining. This third picture is my 23 acre, 165,000 square foot Bitcoin mining facility. Only took me 11 years to get there, but we are mining at scale and we have some of the most amazing technologists behind it, doing tons of R&D on liquid immersion, liquid cooling, lots of different airflow techniques. It's super exciting. If you look up the Bitcoin Lambo or the Bitcoin Benz, you might have heard of me first person in the world to buy a Lamborghini and Huracan with Bitcoin in 2017, 300 million views worldwide, immediately made me a meme. And two months ago, I, I released Bitcoin Benz, it's the world's first AMG GTS mined, purchased with Bitcoin mining rewards, and we announced that on Bloomberg two months ago. I do 10 million views a month on all of my social platforms. We're gonna talk about that. So, what is venture media? Venture media is an alternative investment model that combines the indomitable vectors of profit generation. And this has been a hypothesis that I've executed upon for the last seven years through two previous venture funds. It's four things. Platform market fit. Platform market fit. Number two, people market fit. Number three, technical engineering over financial engineering. This is a close, close to my heart consideration. We're going to talk about that as well as a global community. Let's jump right in. So what is platform market fit? I'm assuming that since you're here in this talk today, that you are a deployer of capital, or you are an operator, an entrepreneur, and you should probably have a conversation with me because I'm deploying capital into people like you. But it's important that you understand our rubric for investments. Number one, does the platform serve multiple product lines. If you're an operator, I want to know. I want to know whether you have multiple revenue streams in your product. As an angel investor since 2014, I've invested in 17 angel investments and in every single product I invested in failed. The platform survived. I've learned something. Platforms have multivariate opportunities when it comes to user personas, multiple markets, multiple demographics, and de-risking and hedging because they can shift from one product line to another. For me, I no longer invest in products, single products, only platforms. Number two, does a platform serve multiple user personas and communities? We now live in a DeFi, Web3, cryptocurrency, decentralized world where communities, well, that's where it all began. Let us not forget let us not forget that Bitcoin was a digitally native construct. It came from the, the interwebs of cats and prawn, and it was grown by communities. And so Bitcoin is the only performing asset in the world that was born online 
grown through community and expanded through technology. We now live in a world where technology is first, and platforms must be a part of that. Number three, does the platform have an obvious opportunity for market share from competitors? We're in DeFi, we're in decentralization, we're in crypto, we're in Bitcoin. The entire world is absolutely our oyster. For me, buying my first Bitcoin in 2011 at $2.52 was an amazing idea. It catapulted me to, a, to an un, un, this amazing potential of this world that I could program my own money and bring people along with me. Let that sink in. We can now program our own money. Platforms, you should program a lot of money. Number four, does the platform support digital currencies, DeFi, and Web 3.0? It's pretty obvious. We're here. That's why you're here in this talk. That's why you're here at this conference. If your platform is not leveraging the latest technologies in DeFi and crypto, I'm not interested in giving you a check. <laughs> Number five, does the platform have an obvious opportunity for community growth, even if it's a niche? You might have read the blog post about the raving fans from A16Z a couple years ago. They talked about that any type of startup can completely be monetized and can have profitability with only a thousand raving fans. A thousand raving fans at a subscription rate of about $45 per month can make your startup not only profitable, but it can help you expand into other communities that these individuals and your subscribers are connected with. That is the game on platform market fit. It's serving a community, but multiple communities at the same time. We in the crypto space are very transient, right? If you, if you follow the NFT rules, then you know. Individuals go into NFT projects, they move out, they get liquidity, they make money, maybe they exit scam, but it doesn't matter. They move on and they move on and they move on. We want to collect these people, and that's what platforms do. Let's talk about person market fit, number two. Are the founders, the core operators, the right people and personality for this market? This is an unfair advantage that we have. Because I've been in crypto since 2011. I've been building multi-million communities, global communities since 2011. So for me, it's almost unfair that I have this advantage. Every single investment from our fund, every single investment from our fund are from people from our community. So if you're not in our community, I won't invest in you. And the reason is because I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're made of. I don't know how long you've been here. I don't know what you care about. I don't understand your motives. And so this is the intentionality that is required, I believe, in the venture capital world. You must spend more time with your operators. You must spend more time understanding who they are. You must spend more time digging in with them. The picture that you see there is Jaime. He's my managing partner of my fund. He was a subscriber of mine seven years ago. He just so happened to be an amazing infrastructure operator and employer of capital. Amazing. So I hired him. The middle guy is Greg Chick. He runs our first investment, my 23 acre, 165,000 square foot mining facility. He was part of my community too. I grew and I learned about him. I trusted him. I said, can you do this? If I give you a million dollars, will you make me money? He said, yeah. So far we've made 460,000 of our investment back in six months. Not bad. Brandon, he's our core architect for one of our investments in a staking platform. Really excited, unfortunately I can't talk too much about it, but Brandon has been part of our community for six years. I've broken bread with him. He's a great investor. And so, personal market fit is something that is absolutely essential to the success of the investments that you make. And it takes that people, that human equity, to learn about them, to grow with them, to create that relational bridge so that you understand what truly motivates them. I wrote a blog post a couple years ago talking about the two core characteristics of an, of an operator that I will invest in. Number one, perseverance. Number two, resilience. Will, will they continue on and hustle and grind while getting their face smashed in by the markets? That is what it takes. So do you deeply, you, venture capitalists, private equity, high net worth individuals, if you're here, do you deeply know that market? And do you understand what personalities are successful here? What are the characteristics? What are the go-to behaviors that make 
successful people within this niche or this market or this particular category, what makes them special? What makes them have the, the, the outsized advantage? The only way to do that is you have to sit down with them. You have to understand them. You have to ask them good questions. Number three, what specific mental models are necessary? What I love about my game is in our fund, we have to use a barbell strategy. Very simple. On one end of the barbell is asset hedging and Bitcoin mining. I've been Bitcoin mining for over a decade. It's just calculus, not guesswork for us. The second thing that we do is we focus on the other side of the barbell, on staking platforms. You guys know all about staking. Staking is a capitalist play as well. And so we want to under, we want to understand: Do these operators that you see before you are they? Do they have the right mental models? Do they have the right behavioral structures? Do they have the right frameworks of operation? And do they have the leadership characteristics that are necessary to help motivate the people that work with them? Number four: Are they experts in social media? <laughs> We have disqualified 90% of the people who ask us for checks because they don't do social media. I'm a managing partner of a fund, general partner of a fund. I run social media all the time. We now live in a world where you no longer have an excuse to not tweet it. Have you checked my Twitter recently? I tweeted all your guys' faces already. <laughs> you have to. You have to be engaged with the community. You have to be engaged with social apparatus around us. And number five, do they create content? If you don't, if you come to me and say, hey, Peter, I would like for you to cut me a check for my great idea, I'll say, great. Show me your Twitter. Show me your Instagram. Show me your TikTok. Show me your Snapchat. Show me your Facebook. Show me your Medium blog. Show me your YouTube. How many do you have? If you can't answer these questions, it's going to be very hard for me to invest in you because we live in this world now, this web 3.0 world now. Did you know that the data aggregators are all creating user personas for you right now? You just don't control them. I'd rather control the way the world sees me. Number three, technical engineering over financial engineering. We love math. So the investments that we like to make under the venture media context are individuals who focus on code, not financial finagling, not financial sh shenanigans. We want to know if you can create value as a function of code. Do you use agile and strong frameworks? We might be the only venture fund ever to, to disqualify investments if you don't know agile or scrum. <laughs> because agile and scrum is the fastest way to build stuff. So I want to make sure that you know that and you understand how to deploy your execution strategy using an Atlas Scrum framework. Number two, is value appreciating a function of code? This is actually an in input-output mechanism within venture media. Because now we live in a data world where actually the most value that you can have as a company is not necessarily the product you create, but actually the user data that you have. And so can we export that user data? Can we deploy that user data? Can we monetize? that user data. And only, only data-driven feature decisions are the things that we care about. Edward Stemming, a famous systems thinker, said this. He said, in God we trust, everyone else bring data. That's a cultural nuance of our company. If you don't have data, we're not going to invest. Do you have existing traction? Do you just need customers? This is essentially crucial. It's so crucial. For the investments we make in venture media, we want to know if you already have Traction. And you say, well, Peter, that's why I'm asking for you for a check, for that help, sir. No, 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 no. We live in now a world where you can monetize your personality, you can monetize your voice, you can monetize your content already on day one. Every single one of the startups that we've invested in already have traction. And usually they're just a one-man, two-man show. And so these are hustlers that we're investing in. And finally, passive income generation as a known entity. We live in DeFi. We live in the staking world. We live in a world where ab abstractions of abstractions of abstractions are the norm. Right? No one actually buys the underlying asset anymore. We're just buying pink, pink slips to the derivative. And so because we live in an abstraction world, it is actually easy from a data-centric perspective to extract the data you have and monetize it immediately. And we know how. Finally, a global community. 
man, oh man, this is the juju. This is the juju. This, I get excited about this stuff. Some of you guys are like, what? This is the juju. You know what's great? What's great is being able to cut an operator a $150,000 check. Feels good. I love being at the table to go shake that hand and say, sir, ma'am, let's fucking crush it. But you know what's better than a 250 check? <laughs> Giving them too many people from my community. The last startup that we invested, we gave them a $150,000 check. We gave them our 2 million person community in 10 days. They had 250 new JIRA tickets telling them exactly how to improve their product. In 60 days, they had 5,500 new customers. Sounds like I'm manufacturing liquidity. That's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. I invest in you. I give you my community of 2 million people doing 10 million views per month. And now you have instant feedback on your features, your products, your ideas. And now you instantly have customers. Sounds like a good deal. Steve Jobs there, he had a great quote to think different. What he did, he created a raving fan community of people who love that mobile device, that iPhone, that iPad. Walt Disney in the middle there, he created the Magic Kingdom, which was a community outside your normal reality. Walt Disney was once quoted as saying, I want people to come into the Magic Kingdom and lose themselves in this world, in this community. Those are the types of feelings we want to have in this digital community. Stan Lee at the bottom there, he had Stan Lee's bullpen, where he had an open glass area where you could see him and all the writers, and all the producers, and all the artists talking about what the next comic was going to be. He made it glass for a reason, so that people could come and see them working. And he grew a really tight niche community that he eventually mobilized to help him grow one of the most, the biggest global communities in Marvel. And you guys obviously know the outcome. And so, four things. Infinite deal flow can come to you with a global community. The real issue is managing it well. We get about seven to nine inbound a day. The biggest issue that we have is dealing through the shit points and all the terrible ideas. But if you can manage it well, you will have infinite deal flow of highly motivated community members who've been with you for years and like you. And they like what you're doing. They want your money. They want your support. They want your infrastructure. Because why? You've spent the time getting to know them. you spent the time engaging in the community that they are a part of. Number two, you immediately boost revenue, lower uh, customer acquisition costs, improve conversion, and IRR. It's very simple. Cutting people a check is great, but giving them actual customers is even better. As I've talked about, feedback on product functions, features, UI, UX experiences, and finally, number four, your best investments are hidden gems in these communities. Every single one, again, every single one of the investments that we have made at our fund are community members who've been with us for years. So, I'd like to, I have just a couple minutes left, so we're finishing out here. I'd love for you guys to start thinking about where you are. I'm an educator after all, so I kind of like to have a little bit of praxis or practical application at the end of this. So consider this as you sit there and you listen. As an individual, where do you begin? Are you a deployer of capital? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you an operator? Are you a bank? Are you a financial institution? I don't know. But what I do know is that you as an individual is where it starts. What's your Twitter like? What's your Instagram like? What's your TikTok like? What's your YouTube? And number two, as a venture fund, where do you begin? What communities can you begin reaching out to? Where can you plug yourself in? Not just for deal flow, we got enough of that, but for actual real community, real relationships. And far be it that I'd say that it's actually relationships that make money. Mm -hmm. So I want to offer you guys an opportunity. How many of you guys have met a venture fund with 300,000 subscribers on their YouTube? You just have. I'm the only venture fund in the world that has 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. So my, every single one of my deals that I invest in, we put massive amounts of media behind them and make them look like fucking rock stars. We also, one of our investments is DCTV, that's decentralized TV, a decentralized platform made up of four amazing content creators 
and they have a community that you can join at bit.ly slash meta community. Here's my invitation to every single one here. DCTV currently, went with its surrounding ecosystem, does about 10 million views a month. If you would like to join them and go on stream, we're the only fund that live streams 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and sometimes if I have time, I'll stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're the only fund in the world that streams three times a day. But if you'd like to be part of that, if you'd like to be part of our community outreach, it's free. So join the meta community, bit.ly slash meta community, hit up Brad or Ann in that community. They will put you on a live stream. You want to talk about your new wallet? Ruben, I already pinged them on Discord. I said, we need that guy to come on DCTV to talk about his new idea and his wallet. I invite you. There's the opportunity there. So I'm good. Time is up. Any questions? What's that? Uh, that's not that's not it. It's using it's that look for that logo, DCTV. Yes, question. Um, I don't know if you're pointing over my head or at me. <laughs> uh, as far as right now, NFT communities and innovating, what are things that you're looking for in NFT projects right now beyond hype? That's a great question. Actually, one of our investments in our portfolio is an NFT platform on Binance. Really exciting. The reason I'm super excited about that is number one, Binance doesn't have an actual NFT marketplace. Open C is far too slow. And so, your question, back to your question. What am I looking for in NFTs? Security, digital identity. That's where I think it's going next. So, I'm currently in talks with one operator who's looking at leveraging a non fungible ID token string for password protection. I don't quite understand it fully. However, what I do understand is that if we can NFT eyes, passwords, then truly, truly, we can be the only one truly on it. And so I think there's a problem to be solved there. And that's where I think NFTs will eventually evolve or mature into. Right now, I'm not convinced that NFTs are, uh, that are actually just hosted on Amazon Cloud or Google Cloud are actual value. Is that right? Yeah. Are you also looking along the lines of the soulbound NFTs? Soulbound reminds me of Dark Souls. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Because Dark Souls is a great idea. Question? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about um, the digital identity piece? As you mentioned, uh, like where do you see digital assets playing into how we like, represent ourselves? Okay, one of our portfolio investments is called Katina. It's an inter Katina is defined as an interlocking chain. What I find fascinating about this is they're essentially an interoperability protocol. But what's so fascinating is that their business model here, Katina, is what they want to do is make everything that you create an NFT. I think that's a worthy idea. Consider the opportunity. If you create any type of content and it's automatically created into an NFT, then you could technically monetize that content in any in any way. And actually, what's even more fascinating is you're creating content every day anyway. And so what that moves into is the digital identity, digital security, and digital ownership over the content you're giving Facebook, Google, Twitter right now when you tweet. Right? And so I think there's a lot of interconnectivity there. And so that's where I think the world is going, is that we're gonna realize that dang on it, I'm creating this content. I'm live streaming right now, right there. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm 360 camera in this, this talk right now, right here. I'm creating massive amounts of content. And all it did, all it took me was to press that record button, press this record button, and I'm gonna give this to DCTV, and they're gonna chop it up and make me look great. If I could NFTize that, then I could monetize it. Not that this talk is valuable, but you understand the point. Content is value in the future. And NF being able to NFTize your content is going to be absolutely central. Do you think that I understand your point of like NFTizing content. That's not a real word. We should make a real word. Yeah, could be. Um, like outside of just the ownership, the true ownership of it, what makes that more advantageous than just monetizing through like Facebook, Twitter, dis or Facebook, Twitter, and like media traditionally? Yeah, but you want to own. You want to own the value proposition 
throughout the entire stack, don't you? Right, you don't want to be giving the bank or Facebook or Twitter any of that information. I, I think I think we're eventually going to move to a a world where you can truly turn on and off switches of data access. I think that's going to be an exciting time. Question. Creating the content for one thing, and then in terms of getting it out there, like how do you prioritize the various platforms? Like I'm, I'm good at certain platforms, I suck at others. Like Discord, Telegram, what? Like I mean, it's 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 almost overwhelming. It is overwhelming. You should pick one or two that you're exceptionally good at, and then find partners in crime that can help you scale over to others. And so we do this, it's, it's not hard. If, let's say you join uh, DCTV, you hang out there on their Discord chat. You'll find some people that are like you, maybe similar to you, maybe completely different from you. Totally okay. What's great about that is it allows you to smash out into that. It allows you to have a conversation and say, you know what, I'm kind of into this. And they'll say, well, I'm kind of into this. That's amazing. We're all in this community together creating content. Why don't we create community and content together? And what's so great about communities like this is that they're helpful and they'll create infrastructure and processes making it easy for you to join. I, I can go on DCTV in about a couple hours and they'll just send me a link. And they'll just say, I want to show up and I want to talk about what I want to talk about. And they'll give me 15 seconds on their show. And so these types of communities are very open and helpful. And so the only question that you have to ask yourself is when am I going to join these communities? And when am I going to find someone who can help me traverse those other social platforms that I'm unfamiliar with? Question, right here. Don't sell yourself short. The content of this presentation is quite valuable. Thank you, sir. What, what, do, you think, what do you think about um, non-EVM blockchain on your Did that come out? Um, so, I'm gonna sound very Bitcoin maxi, maxi here. <laughs> so, I only mine Bitcoin because I know I don't make a lot of money with Bitcoin. Uh, I understand the economics exceptionally well. Uh, in the staking world and non-EVM non staking platforms like Cardano, I am incredulous about the... So if we take mining gold, for example, there are three particular facets to mining gold effectively. Right? There is the machinery, there is the investment cost, and the time cost to do so. And so these are known entities, these are known knowns that we have in this equation, in this problem. With anything that is like a staking mechanism, I fail to see the energy cost. I fail to see the natural, intrinsic incentive of work being done for the value extracted. If I'm gonna mine Bitcoin, that means I'm gonna buy a $10,000 miner. That's my investment, that's my motivation. I gotta get paid back then. I can, I can fork a coin in 24 hours and make it a staking coin. Was there effort involved with that? And so, I'm struggling right now to be able to find the right balance between staking platforms that are actually creating value and staking platforms that are just creating AP more. I think there needs to be a stronger use case for the applicability and second layer of applications on top of these that would probably move me over to being a, a bigger fan of it. Because right now they're just digital CDs and digital CDs aren't that sexy to me. I appreciate all your focus on the community and how you guys get How many of you guys played like World of Warcraft? And you guys play like Call of Duty? And you guys play like, do you ever guys hang out in a lobby? That's what the metaverse is. It's just a fucking lobby. <laughs> but oh, we have digital avatars now. That's right. So I am not, I have, we have not invested in any metaverse projects uh, lately or recently. And the reason is because I cannot find the stickiness or value proposition in a Call of Duty lobby that has avatars attached to it yet. I'm willing to be convinced, so if anyone has a great idea on how they're deploying and executing against a very unique metaphor strategy, I'm all ears. Any other questions, sir? So, you have a, a robust community. Other than, you know, bringing your content to that community, what's the best way to use this community? We have a job to make Awesome. Awesome. Uh, the best way to deploy your community is ask the questions. Are they like yeah. active event goers or ticket buyers? Are they creating content for you? No, no, it's, it's not like this. So we don't get to like engage with them. 
You don't get engaged? You can't say that out loud, bro. <laughs> Email sucks. Do you notice I didn't say email at all? <laughs> if you have that large of a community, man, I would be making so many amazing call to actions with them. And I'd say, hey, who's out in Boston? Who's out in LA? Who's out in Atlanta? Who's out in Miami? Raise your hand. We have packages for you. What are these packages? Well, very simple. For us as a, as a venture fund, we give all of our startups packages. They're, we call them digital nano packs. You know, it's kind of like the Legend of Zelda, right? What they say, don't go the road alone. So we give them digital mana packs, and what these digital mana packs are is all the swag they need to represent us well, right? All the links they need for their social, all the collateral in zip files. Hey, you want to tweet about us? Here's your, here's your collateral. Here's your perfect, you know, Twitter size. Here's your Instagram size. Here's your TikTok size. Here's, we give them everything so they don't have to think about creating content for us. And so that's what you need to do. If you have a community like that, you spend six hours templatizing everything you need from your brand perspective and you say guys here's a zip file go fucking go tell us tell the world about us right and they'll give you feedback i say well i went to this and i went to this and then someone might say you know what bro can you even give me 250 bucks because if you give me 250 bucks then i can actually do a meetup at wawa house and that's where you say yeah do it Create lots of content for us. Get lots of video, right? And then you'll have the first community meetup at Waffle, Waffle House. I love Waffle House. Uh, uh, first community meetup at Waffle House, and you can, and that might be, that might end up being a viral thing. You're not leveraging your community. You need to. Any other questions? All right, final one. Final false. <laughs> Thank you guys, I'll be around. And guys, feel free to harass Peter and get him in a corner and pitch your ideas to him, because that's secretly why he, he's, he's actually here. we got another one coming up in 10 minutes, guys. You guys definitely do not want to miss this. Anybody who has followed me ever on social media knows that my social media account grew because of my trading and charting and analysis over the years. Well, the next guest 